All right, Mark Deering here from the Adventure Channel. We have another great person to interview here today. I think you might be the, the person that has done the most miles, I think, sitting next to me here to talk to, at least in a single, for sure, in an event. All right, so yes. I'd like, we want to talk a little bit about that. Anyway, you can tell I got all kinds of, all kinds of questions going already. Jim Trout, how's it going? I'm doing great. Beautiful day to ride. Yes, yeah. yes, so he pulls up on his bike. I was <laughs> expecting him to pull up in a car, uh, but I guess when you're doing what we're about to talk about, you ride the bike as much as you can. I take every opportunity. I um, actually don't drive much. I commute to work every day, rain, um, snow, sleet, whatever. It's three miles each way, so it's not that big of a deal. But sure. um, yeah, ride to the grocery store, ride to the library, wherever I need to go. Sure. Um, and not every day is a training ride. It's just getting on the bike. and Seat time. Yep. Seat yep. time. I've heard. I've heard other professionals, you know, mention seat time is a big thing. Yes, for sure. So, so let's talk a little bit about what we're here to talk about. It's uh, it's the race across America. Um, if you don't know much about it, look it up on YouTube. I spent some time watching documentaries. Um, really got a vibe for what you're about to do. Um, watching some of those documentaries and it's uh it's impressive it is super impressive why don't you talk a little bit about race across america just so these guys know sure um i think it's the world's longest bike race uh i'm sure there's other bike packing i've seen over the um, last few years um there's like a four thousand miler in europe southernmost to the northernmost up in norway but um this race is so special it's been going on since 1982 i believe uh it's more of a cult Type uh, still is kind of a cult, but it's gaining a little bit more popular mainstream. Um, a lot of it's because there is no sleep. The clock does not stop. Uh, you try to stay up as long as you can, try and get as much time in the saddle as you can, and just it's all about time management and trying to keep your wits about you to uh, to, to stay on the bike. And it's required to have uh, a crew with you, so at least four people minimum. Uh, most crews have at least two to three cars and 10 to 15 people uh, as crew. And that's just for one rider. They also have other divisions besides solo. They have team divisions, two person, four person, eight person, tandem, mixed. Um, so when you all put it together, it's about uh, 200 racers doing this race. Um, Let's talk yeah. about that. So you are, so there is group options. Yes. You know, there's, there's team options. You're solo. Yeah, I've, um, I don't know, I'm impressed with the, the teams because in a way they, they're they uh, more redlining than I am. I'm just kind of pacing myself. Those guys are, they come up and this guy's waiting and they might do 30 minute intervals. And uh, the bigger the team, the smaller the intervals, maybe 10 minutes, but you're going 25 miles an hour for oh, wow. 10, 15 minutes. So it's like a time trial. And yes, you do have eight other people to cycle through, but you know, before you know it, it's like an hour and a half away and you've got to do your 25 miles an hour again. So imagine that over, uh, those guys finished in about five to six days. I was gonna say, what's, so yeah. what's your, um, in 2005, yes. it was your first how many days? 11 days and change. Um, you know, the sub 10 is like just awesome. Not too many people have finished sub 10. Winners usually get done in eight to nine days. Okay. Um, so I don't anticipate that, but uh, there's the largest field of 50 plus this year. I'm 52. Um, and there's only four Americans, believe it or not. It's, it's a great race, too, because it's a huge international fair. It's uh, all over Europe, Brazil, Canada, Mexico, Australia. Um, yeah, so it's, it's going to be great to see foreign languages. And just uh, uh, we all start pretty much same time, one minute intervals, uh, but they'll be kind of condensed at the beginning in California. And I, I'm looking forward to my crew meeting people from around the world at kind of various stops and crews are all kind of gathered and... Um, Lifelong friends. Yeah, I know. It's just because uh, we're all so excited and passionate about cycling. And this is like the epitome of, of bike racing, I feel, and sharing the same goals. And that I, yeah. So the, the um, <clears throat> different countries makes tons of sense because I was watching the YouTube and I'm like, accents, accents, yeah. accents, <laughs> accents. I'm like makes sense you yeah. know uh so and i also heard on the um videos i was watching uh the one guy was getting congratulated on on uh taking on this um from a tour de france rider and he said and i like swallowed when he said it he said yeah you're congratulations you're taking this on you are doing um 
twice as much as we do in the tour. Yeah. I mean, even just yeah. hearing, I mean. <laughs> yeah, no, and no, uh, you know, those are all pros. So they, I don't want to say they don't work hard, but they get, you know, masseuses, yeah. and chefs, uh, you know, everything's catered for them. They, their bikes are taken care of. They just get off the bike. But I mean, they're, they're world-class athletes. So there's more power to them, but it, it is, um, you know, we're all kind of grassroots, nobody sponsors. I mean, you get a few things here and there, but uh, most of it's on our own dime. Um, and a lot of people do fundraising. Uh, I fund, I did a few other races uh, fundraising, but it's so much to undertake. You were asking me about how much time or if I have more miles than anybody, that's not true. I have three kids, a house, a full-time job. Actually, I have two jobs, okay. I work night shift. Um, I would love to ride more and more often, but um, with Solo Ram, it's not necessarily about the speed. It's about knowing your body, uh, staying on the bike, trying to, you know, last year I, I threw up and I lost probably 20 pounds and then I eventually gained, I guess for that swing, it's almost 40 pounds. Oh, wow. Because uh, I lost 20 in the desert because I was throwing up and couldn't keep fluids down. And then by the time I got to Missouri, I was 40 more pounds than I was in Arizona. And what? I was like a little blimp. You know? Wait a minute, how much time yeah. is that between? About four days. Yeah. Four. So between that time frame, I dropped out around, uh, I think, day 10. So let's talk yeah. about that. And yeah. I want to I still talk about that, the weight part, but let's yeah. talk about that. So 2005, you finished. Finished. Yep. I uh, had a good, successful race. It was mostly family. I only had five crew, so kind of bare bones. Um, never been in. I qualified. I lived in Seattle at the time, so I you have to qualify for this race, too. You can't just like, well, I think I'll do this next year. That makes there's, sense. There's a few races that you have to... Uh, successfully complete or finish in a certain time. Uh, so I qualified at Race Cross Oregon and it had, you know, in 1980, I remember seeing these guys uh, go out there doing it and just totally awestruck. And I thought, I want to do that someday. And I thought about it in my 20s. I did a lot of the 24 hour challenge here. Have you familiar with that race? 24 hour challenge. Yeah, it's at, in uh, Middleville. It's a 24 yes. hours. Yeah, of, uh, a friend road. of mine, Jason, used to do that. Yeah, so that kind of got me into ultra cycling. And then this group called Randonneurs are French um, kind of, uh, Paris Press Paris is their Super Bowl of Randonneuring. It's, uh, it's a timed event, but they're not necessarily races, but okay. they, they're really long distance, like 1200 kilometers is their longest distance. Okay. And so two, four, six, uh, and then 1200 kilometers. And you have certain times to do it. So it's a really big accomplishment if you finish these. And that was it's kind of like touring, a hybrid of touring and sort of racing, sort of, accomplishment of a, a big long race a ride mm -hmm. and that kind of segued into ram so i had, okay yeah <laughs> okay okay so then you let's fast forward you did it again um somewhat recently last year that's last year okay I 2021 i was signed up to do it for my 50th birthday present to myself i turned 50 in 2020 but covid sure uh canceled it i was really bummed um but still had to sign up and everything. So did 2021 and uh, yeah, everything was going pretty well until the desert uh, and you try and take it easy, try to eat liquids and do all these things that are right. I've, my Achilles heel has always been the heat, okay. no matter what I do. Um, I had cooling vests, I had ice water, I had a great crew with spray down every you know few hundred, I'd say every half mile, they were spraying me down, giving me cold water, cold rags. Okay. Uh, a cooling vest. Um, <laughs> I feel so bad because I worked so hard and I yeah. still fell apart. You know, <laughs> it, there wasn't much. Uh, but I think we all enjoyed uh, the goal and seeing us kind of go. I mean, it was, I think, 12 hours in the race where I was just on the ground at dark and throwing up everywhere. And mm. my crew had never seen that before. Um, my wife was been my crew for the last 30 years on various races and she sure. was still in Grand Rapids. She had school teacher, so she had to join us later. Okay. So I had my friends and um, they were looking at me down on the ground and I saw the look of worry and I'm like, I've been here so many times. It's okay. <laughs> it really sucks. I hate You're this. You're trying to comfort them. Yes. <laughs> It'll be okay. I remember Josh came up to me with ice cubes. He's rubbing my temple with these and I'm like, oh, that's so cool. Thank you. <laughs> and um, yeah, they just kind of tried to keep. 
I can see yeah. like a compassionate guy like worried about the the crew who's yeah. worried about him. And, yeah. Because and <laughs> crewing is no joke. You you also get sleep dep deprivation. You ha it's so much pressure on you to make sure you navigate well. You're following the rules. There's like yeah, I don't know 50 pages of, of a rule book you have to follow. It's all for safety. It's nothing. Sure. And it all kind of makes sense. But if you're on the wrong side of the road, if you're um, lights aren't working, if you how to pass other racers or riders. Um, there's just a, a slew of things that once you get kind of foggy head, you start losing track yeah. of that kind of thing. And it's, it's important. So there's, and if you mess up, that's time. So it's 15 minutes or an hour penalty. Okay. And if I'm working my butt off and they screw up just cause they should have been paying attention or they make a wrong turn or something. I, yeah, it's kind of yeah. frustrating. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. No pressure. Yeah. But don't screw up. Right, right, right. No, that, that makes sense too. Like if you, uh, like I say, I highly recommend watching some of these documentaries. Um, the, you know, I forget which one I watched last night, but it was a full hour and 10 minutes, you know, probably huge dollars to put this together because it was, you know, really in. Was be, it when the wheels come off? Was it? Might have been. What's his name? Uh, I know he's from California, works at Stanford, and he had his part of his family there. I don't think he was uh, uh, from the U.S. Okay. But There's. Yeah, there's a lot of them out there. Okay. Some are well polished and produced, others are just totally cameo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This yeah. one was polished and produced, which okay. I appreciate for the instance of learning. Yeah. But uh, um, but yeah, looking at the faces of the uh, crew and listening to what they're going through. So that's actually bringing up to me some more questions. So, um, well, let's finish that conversation yeah. about the last year we got to mile what? In, in 2,500, so it's like 2,450, um, somewhere in Ohio. 500 short of the 3,000. Yes. Uh, we had about 48 hours left in the race. I had gained, um, I was up, I normally weigh 160. I was up to 185, I think. And I had a nurse with me and she was kind of awestruck by the way my body looked. She works in the ER, uh, so do I at Butterworth. And we see our share of congestive heart failure patients, which usually tend to pool your um, fluids. <laughs> and I had what's called four plus pitting edema where you, it's kind of like Pillsbury Doughboy where you put your finger oh, onto your leg. It just like you sinks stays in, in and it sure. stays there. I have that right no. now. <laughs> yeah. and it's not pinch an inch, not yeah, special yeah, yeah. K. It's, uh, it, it looks really bad. And um, so we were trying to figure out what was causing that. We think it was a salt, obviously fluid imbalance, but we were thinking salt because uh, my kidneys were still doing all right. Um, but it was getting progressively worse and it was slowing me down. I mean, I had 20 more pounds of luggage on me that I'm carrying. It was getting worse and worse. We're thinking, you know, and, and so my speed, even if I were able to maintain 10 miles an hour for that last 48 hours, I, and it was going right before the Appalachians as well. Oh, okay. So this, those are the steepest parts of the race right at the end. Um, of the whole race? No, not yeah. really. Yeah, the okay. steepest, most severe uh, climbing. So yes, your end. elevation is 4,000 feet, you know, compared to 10,000 plus in just Colorado, but it's just- More grade. Yeah, okay. and it's really taxing on the body. Um, so mentally, I, I was there. I, you know, it's the hardest thing you can ever imagine to do this race. And every other race I've done endurance wise, I've done ultra running, multi-day, um, done the Leadville. Yep. Um, actually threw up after Leadville too, but I did it. Um, <laughs> and uh, the run or the ride? Uh, the ride. Okay. Yeah, so I like mountain bike racing. I, I've done Arrowhead, um, oh, yeah. that running race. Uh, I know they have mountain bike division, but I've done mm -hmm. a running th three times. I actually hold the record and unsupported. Oh, wow. Um, I did the Badwater Ultra Marathon. And all those races are so hard, but I always say it's not RAM. It's, it's, sure. It'll be over in. 36 hours. And you think, oh, it's 36 hours. Oh, but, that's it. Yeah, it's not <laughs> 10 days or 12 days where you have to get back on your bike. You have to get up after a two hour nap and uh, somehow shove food down you. It's raining, it's cold, you stink, you're, you have blisters, you have saddle sores, uh, the crew's starting to fall apart. <laughs> uh, people are angry, people are not getting enough sleep. Uh, we're just waiting to the end. Yeah, it's, uh, there's nothing yeah. compared how, to How that. did you decide? I mean, because of the nurse and everything, you kind yeah. of just, just, it was probably medically wise to yeah. pull the plug at some point. And there's, but I would imagine, you know, like say the little piddly hundred mile stuff I've mm -hmm. done, um, even the lumberjack, that third lap, you know, yeah. oh, did you go? No, that's hard. So like, we, we, there's a ton of people um, that pull the plug on that third lap. Yeah. Cause they just know, I mean, 
How many times in a 3,000 mile race do you almost pull the plug? Zero. Okay, um, I like that. You, you just work it out. It seems like you do have enough time, especially when I was thrown up in the desert. I mean, come on, you're a day, that was 12 hours in, there's no way. Yeah. A lot of people um, would get an IV fluid, I didn't have IV fluids, um, but I know my body, I've been there before. And same with kind of lumberjack, it's like, you still have some time. I mean, unless you're just walking, and, but even if you take a one or two hour break, mm -hmm. I think with that kind of race, you you know, you might finish and I don't know what the cutoff is, but let's say- 12 50, hours, I think. Yeah, so I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I think I finished a nine and I was hoping for a lot more, like a, a mm -hmm. lot less time, but sure. I, I stopped here and there just to get fluids and you just gotta rest. Yeah. And that's, that's really tough in a race. But if you wanna finish, you have to rest if you're at that state. There's yep. no way pushing through it. So yep. you just, it's just a problem that's happening right now and you got to figure it out. And a lot of times that's unfortunately stopping. Right, <laughs> right. Men the mental toughness, like yeah. the, a couple things I think of when you say all this, like there's, we've got a cycling team, you know, about 40. And I would say there's 10 of them that are those sprinters that you mentioned yeah. in the beginning. Um, full heart rate, you know, let's do yeah. this. And then there's another half or portion of, uh, of us, I, I go between the two, <laughs> um, that is kind of like, just knows their body, knows their, you know, and so the mental toughness, and then you get into the ultras and stuff like that, and we have some ultra people, and it, it's, that's what's cool about cycling. There's yeah. a ton of it out there, you get to pick your poison, you don't have to, you can even bounce around and try different ones yeah, too. exactly. And, and, Gravel uh, and, and mountain and, and yep. road, um, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So, so pull the plug. Um, this is, this is redemption. Yeah. I feel that, you know, people say, what are you gonna do different? And you know, it's tough to say, I, I actually wasn't thinking about dropping. There was like chit chat amongst the crew, specifically the nurse saying things like, I don't feel morally responsible watching your body blow up literally mm. and not, mm. you know, not doing something about this. So I think there was a little chit chat in the, in the crew. Um, I mean, part of me thinks I just, that was at day 10. So if I finish the race at day 10, then I won't have to deal with that. Um, there you go. But, uh, <laughs> I guess again, taking it easy. Um, the diet was all over the place, especially after the desert. Um, and I think I'm not getting any younger. I, I feel like I'm 30, but 52 is 52. So, sure. um, you know, that's, that's part of it too. So. Uh, total redemption. I'm really excited. Actually, I have my entire crew from last year is coming this year. Same crew. Um, a couple extra people, a couple people aren't, but um, I'm, I'm really happy that they're, they liked it enough where they're coming back for more. That's cool. And a lot, Unfinished you know, business a little bit is, too. Yeah, this is like, for me, it's a three week vacation. For them, it's two weeks out of their busy lives um, to, to be on this trip. And that's a huge sacrifice. I mean, I think. Josh's wife last year had cancer and oh, wow. was getting treatments, but he oh. came and oh, he's wow. coming again. Um, uh, the nurse, uh, she's getting married okay. and she's uh, moving to Seattle in next month. Okay. But, hey, I'll take two weeks for Jim. I mean, yeah. it's so cool. Uh, That's really good support. My wife's leaving like the day after her last day of school and flying out to Phoenix. Um, so actually not even going to be at the start with me. Okay. But that's a lot of work to kind of condense everything she needs to do for like the rest of the summer into like six hours of time. Yeah. So just everybody's making a sacrifice to, to be here and that, you know, it makes me happy. Yeah. When you're on the bike, you know, when you're on the bike and I mean, that's got to help too. Like the, some of the videos I was watching, there's, and I want to talk about some of this, like yeah. the, like you said, pulling up next to you, spraying water on you, yeah. all that type of stuff. You know, I saw some like crazy, um, play some pump up music, right? When, you know, yeah. I mean, there's got to be all kinds yeah. of things like that. But, you know, this crew, um, that's got to feel good. Good. And I can picture sometimes like a little bit of like heavy pressure where like, I am, you know, feeling like crap, but I got this crew. I mean, yeah. explain some of those feelings. Yeah, you feel like you can't let them down at all. You, that's part of the the push, I guess, is like, I'm not going to punk out. I'm not going to, you know, I got to pace myself good enough so that I'm not, I can't let these guys down and they don't want to let me down. And I did crew once on Ram. So the, in 2005, I did the race. 2006, uh, I was crew for Tinker Juarez. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, he mountain bikes in some of the races we go to. Yes. So, uh, so I was crew and... 
the feeling, feeling of um, satisfaction or accomplishment or being proud, I don't know, all those encompassed watching Tinker get up on stage. It's like, it's just so gratifying. Um, there's no feeling like it. It's, uh, it's almost like one of my, my firstborn just graduated high school the other day and it's kind of a similar feeling. Congratulations. I mean, thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it, it's, I think I want to get to the podium this year. I mean, I wanted to last year, but I, I definitely whatever it takes to get there this year because I want them to, to feel accomplished and sure. have that same feeling. So out of 50 riders, you're, you're going for it. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, this year there's 34 solo people, and I'd say uh, it'd be lucky if 20 finished. Okay. Maybe, maybe less uh, like than 17, less than half. And it's a huge rookie field. I'm one of, I think, only five out of those 34 that has actually finished the okay. race. Okay. Um, and as I mentioned, only four Americans. So if, like, if I get yeah. a podium for American, yeah. uh, <laughs> you're getting cool. me. You're getting me the chills, getting yeah. all excited, thinking, <laughs> is this? Um, is this, how is this, I mean, I'm sure there's like the trackers. Is there trackers? Yep. Is there, is there they, fun ways to watch this? Yep, uh, ramrace.org. Um, there's also track leaders. They'll have links on that main Ram webpage. Um, but right at the start line, that's where they stuff the tracker right in your jersey pocket. Okay. And it's on. And they say it has to be on the racer at all times. Sure. And even if you go to sleep or whatever, it has to be with you. That's okay. how they track you. And. The addicting part of that website is they have, there's about 55 time stations. So about every 50 miles or so, um, you have to call in and say, here, I'm at this time station. And they'll update the website. And if you are a fan of Ram, you go to that website and you just keep hitting refresh. You keep hitting refresh. Because oh, yeah. you just want to see that dude's name or that person's name. Made it. Uh, made it or who's ahead of so-and-so or their average speed or... You kind of, kind of, after a while, you know when they're sleeping, you see their average speed drop, you know, from 15 miles an hour or so down to like nine or 10. You're like, sure. oh, he went for a nap. So he's going to be probably cycling for the whole rest of the day. And sure. We'll see. So this person slept and th this guy's still going. Mm -hmm. So you know that this guy's going to have to sleep at some point. So this guy's going to be ahead. So it's just, you know, yeah, you get all that yeah. fun stuff. The, the, one of the biggest, the only comparison I can think of um, is the Iditarod. Yeah. You know, did, you know yeah. Jill Martindale, did you see how she did yeah. that? Yeah. Um, so that reminds me of that same yeah. style thing where, I mean, there was hundreds of us probably at more than that in yeah. Grand Rapids just checking in yeah, kept, and, you know. Yeah, refreshing. Yep, yep. yep. <laughs> so we'll be doing the same for you. That's, cool. that is cool. Yeah. That is cool. So I got a couple notes here, so I'll make sure I touch all this stuff. So you, you touched a little bit on training. Um, what does someone do? I mean, basically, they, you know, training for something like this, it's like you should have, you know, d the day after last year, when should you start training? Yesterday, that whole... <laughs> you you got to recover. Oh, my oh, gosh. Okay. You know, so I took kind of the summer off. I did. Oh, nice. I had signed up for Margie. You know, you have to sign up for that, like, on the hour. It's like yeah. buying a concert ticket or something. Sure. So that was on the, the books. So um, I kind of, I was doing other things in cycling. I was kayaking. I was uh, stand-up paddleboarding. Just kind of moving around, but yep. nothing to intense and then maybe uh and just hanging out with family so yeah it's all that stuff um, super important i did the duathlon in margie so i wanted to build up my running again so i did some trail running coming uh in late august and then just strictly mountain biked just to get my skills in because road biking you're just kind of in this monotonous yes back and forth just Mm -hmm. still, whereas mountain biking you really need that kind of like awareness and skill and margie kind of intimidated me because you, can, you get tired there, you hit a rock, you're going off a cliff or into a tree sure. or <laughs> hitting sure. another rider. Yep, <laughs> yep. That race is insane. Um, so, that, you know, it's kind of building up for that. And then for Ram, um, just after Margie, uh, not much. Just kind of trying not to eat too much over the holidays. And then Tough part. <laughs> maybe just getting the, the indoor pain cave together and oh. uh, looking at stuff I did last year. Um, that thing's got some dust on it. <laughs> yeah, no, you need to get a kicker out. Uh, not now, but yeah, in the winter <laughs> for sure. Uh, and just kind of making a plan. So the first kind of couple months, I'm working on my FTP, trying to build up this strength. And But after you know, I get my FTP maybe where I want it, it's definitely going to go down because I'm not doing any sprinting or anything. Sure. So I looked at from the previous year and just doing these short, intense workouts. And then maybe come uh, late March, April, I 
try and get outside this year just seemed to take forever to get this, outside. It took forever. This year was nuts. This oh year. my gosh. I'm like, oh, I want to go outside so bad. And I got a new bike um, from a uh, sponsor last year. And I think I got five rides in in the fall. Mm -hmm. And I'm really itching it. But you know, there was snow on the ground and it's yeah. wet and cold. And I, just, you always have a runny nose. I'm like, this is awful. Right. And then Ram, they're on Facebook, they're all posting like, it's springtime, it's summertime. And I'm yeah, like, no, I'm coming it's not. from Michigan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We had a late yesterday. start this year. Like, <laughs> like uh, we had a gravel ride yesterday. And I feel like I'm starting from ground zero. Yeah. And it's June. Yeah. You know, it's, it's anyways. A, it took forever. So um, then uh, the last few months or last few weeks, I've been. I have a portable heater and I put that on me. Everything's shut in the basement and I'm just working in the heat and just um, putting in a mild effort. Um, heart rate, you know, as I'm getting older, I've noticed that my heart rate at 150 was fine when I was in my 20s, 140s was okay in my 30s. And then like, don't get above 130 for my heart rate. Now it's like, don't ever get above 120. Oh, wow. <laughs> so okay. That's where I'm at. Okay. And if I'm cruising at 18, 19 miles an hour, that's fine. I mean, I feel comfortable. Sure, um, sure. And if the heater's on me, I notice like to keep the heart rate under 120, obviously, uh, you know, don't look at your speed, really look at your heart rate. And I glance at my speed and like, yeah, it's two to four miles an hour slower, but that's what it is. Sure. Don't look at your speed, don't look at your heart rate. Even if you feel more comfortable at heart rate 125, 130, mm -hmm. for me, uh, especially with ultra, it catches up. Like mm -hmm. maybe by hour 12, where sure. you start throwing up. You think you're doing great, yeah. And you're like, all of a sudden you just, uh, like within 30 minutes, like, wow, I'm going to throw up. And I just threw up the stuff I consumed yeah. six hours ago. Right. What's going on? <laughs> I'm doing fine. You know? But yeah. It's, uh, what you're describing <laughs> on a much, much, much smaller scale is like the, when I, you know, started down with the hundred mile rides and stuff where it's like, you know, I'm used to the two, three hour, give it all you got, yeah. you know? And then I got told by people like you, you know, that average heart rate is super important, mm -hmm. you know, and it makes a ton of sense, you know, and to learn that it's an art to kind of learn, know your body, yeah. know your body. And, and it's so easy to get tricked at, with that feeling of like, I feel good. fine. Mm -hmm. um, Cause it, you don't know when it's just going to turn on you. And uh, so I guess for me, it's looking at the heart rate and uh, I mean, it's really conservative. I mean, it's, it's hard. It's in the first 10 miles of this race, you're at Oceanside where it's probably 65 degrees, nice, cool breeze. Mm -hmm. Two hours later, you're, you go up this climb and it's um, like 95 degrees. The sun's bearing down on you. And no matter what gear you're in, you're just kind of almost standing a little bit. And you're going like five miles an hour, but you're looking at your heart rate going 135, 140. But what are you supposed to do? Even walking right. is hard. Yes. And then you go up over the climb down into this valley in Borrego Springs where it's getting sunset, but it's 95 degrees. And... Um, it's, it's, it's just insane how hot it is. And then the next day, you're going through the Arizona desert, and last year it was 122 degrees. Oh. Uh, it was awful. That would be the awful. worst part I, for me. Yeah. I, you know, it sounds like it's... Uh, yeah, it's, you just, you, and you know you can't, you had just have to kind of slowly get through it. So I'm like, oh, if I just ride 20 miles an hour, I'll be done in three or four hours. And no, <laughs> you're, you're just going to sit there and... So I got to ask yeah. you this. So um, some of the research I was doing, once again, the whole neck thing. I mean, yeah. after, after I realized, I'm like, oh yeah, 3,000 miles yeah. like this. I mean, do you do any, I mean, you can't really like do necks, you can do neck strength training. Yeah. You do, I mean, what do you do with that? I haven't fortunately had that issue. Um, oh, wow. So I think just, uh, I do have a aero bars on one of my bikes, um, but I'm just gonna have a standard bike and just like a touring um, kind of concept. I, I want to think of this as a fast tour with time, kind of like this randonneuring, where you want to look around. You know, you want to uh, just make sure, because there's a lot of times you're just tired and you just don't have the energy or the, sure. the wherewithal to look around. But, you know, look at the birds, look at the yeah. fauna and flora and look at everything. And um, so that's kind of what mentally you just have to make sure you look around. and. There are some great spots out west if you have a tailwind where you just, it's great to get in that tuck. Okay. And just get down like this for miles and miles and miles and you're like, ah, I'm cruising, this is great. Um, but again, you just, every once in a while, get up off the seat, stretch and sure. do things like that. Um, but I have seen some crazy contraptions. Yeah. I, I you know, just, PVC, duct tape. Um, yeah, I saw a, a road. They must not have. 
Last night I was watching, they must have grabbed like one of those mile marker, plastic yeah. mile markers and shoved it yeah. his back. And <laughs> yeah, anything it takes. Yeah, because if you can't look up, um, that you can't ride. Yeah. You know? You're looking at the ground and yeah, it, it's really heartbreaking too. Again, when you get day 10 and you're 2,500 miles in this race and actually maybe you even feel good physically, mm -hmm. but if you can't lift your mm -hmm. head, that's, that's it. Mm -hmm. It's awful. Yep. Yeah, it's... Uh, I couldn't imagine. Uh, so hopefully, <laughs> right? <laughs> Who right, knows? Right, right, I, yeah. I have not had that issue, but I don't do. I thought about doing strength exercises last year. I did a little bit of indoor rowing, okay, to build up my back because my back sometimes gets really stiff, but mm -hmm. never spasms. Okay. Um, I have, I think, four different seats I'll be using this year, three different bikes, uh, and that's to ward off saddle sores. I had okay. really bad saddle sores last year. I'm going with minimal padding pants this year i've been training a lot in minimal padding kind of triathlon shorts okay uh, instead of the big puffy padding yep yep um so far so good but you don't really i didn't get saddle sores till mile i don't know 1500 2000 okay and they were awful like open wound bolt ulcers oh right where you, so every single pedal stroke oh. every single pedal stroke <laughs> every and that's again the mental thing just right. you know get it on your mind that is insane yeah that is insane. So on, along those lines, um, what would you say, what would you say, let's start with the bad first and then mm -hmm. we'll go to the good. What's like your, man, this bad memory just, you know, I, this is the worst. Is there one that you can pinpoint or at least a couple um, maybe or? I'd say it would be with crew on my first time around. Um, there was a lot of animosity or butting heads and that was really stressful. They tried to keep it from me, but uh, we had we had an RV and a um, follow vehicle, which is our conversion van. And at one point, you know, I think we had a camera guy. NBC was doing a production. Uh, mm. Bicycle Dreams is mm. the movie that was shot on my race in mm -hmm. 2005. Mm -hmm. And uh, so much emotion during that ra ride uh, race because uh, a rider died in Colorado, Ooh. got hit by a car. Okay. And uh, so I think we were all emotionally, you know, we we didn't know whether we should drop the race if the race can be canceled or. But we just, and I had a, my, my um, son who just graduated from high school, he was less than one. Um, so I left him back in Seattle mm. <laughs> so, mm. to do this race. And, and it's like, God, this could be death. And it just, there was a, from that point on, there was a lot more stress within the crew. But at one point there was, out of those six people, five were in this tiny little follow vehicle. And one of the crew members was over here in the, the RV because that person was not, not uh, just annoying everybody else. Ah, okay. And you could sense it. Yeah. And it's pressure on you. Yeah. And I was trying to be jokey about it and funny and, um, but we got to the end, you know, so that was the important thing. Yeah. And, uh, and as far as on the bike, uh, you know, I think headwinds are the most, uh, t uh just mentally draining mm -hmm. of everything. There's not necessarily much pain, but, it's the howling and the blowing and you know, you're pushing so hard and you look down and you're going 10 to 12 miles an hour. And then you start doing the math in your head. Let's see, next checkpoint's 50 miles away. So this is five more hours of this. And you were hoping to maybe hit that time at like midnight to go to sleep. But you're like, you know, I'm not gonna get there till like 2 a.m. at this point. And when, when am I gonna sleep? You know, now, <laughs> you know, my plan was to sleep from midnight to three and oh, then we're gonna get to games. this thing. Yeah. And uh, so you just, you just, over time, you just, I think it is what it is. You just, you just forge through and don't think like that because it's self defeating and you you're, can't change anything. What you're describing there, like um, to people that I get, I, um, I tend to get a lot of people into cycling and racing. I always, I'm like, you know, say, oh, you gotta try it. You know, it's changed my life, mm -hmm. you know, whatever. And then even my wife, where she raced for a while, now she likes to ride, and she's talking about racing here and there again, you know, again. And she said one time we were heading up to a race, and uh, she was with a few of us buddies, and we were excited, you know, getting ready, excited, nervous, and um, and oh, that's what it was. We said we were nervous, and she's like, "You guys are nervous." <laughs> I'm like, "Yeah, the nerves and the yeah. the black, you know, the um, dark moments I call them. Yeah. Dark moments happen yeah. for everybody." Yeah. Um, I can't imagine how many dark moments I would have on that. Right? Yeah, more than one. <laughs> Every day has some. 
But you know, if you do them long enough or race this long enough, it, you get the high and the low and the high and low, and you just kind of got to go ride it out because it always gets better. Yep. And it's it's kind of like life, you know. I, That's I what feel, I was thinking as you said it. Um, these ultras, uh, people ask why do you do them or you know what's so special about them, and I think that one of the biggest ones is that I feel like it's a a micro cosm or micro story of your life like condensed like you can from birth to death i feel like it's just right mm -hmm. there and you're living it in this whole thing um and it, you know just to get through some of that stuff and then you're so happy and then it, you know sad again yeah tough again and then you just like how do i get through this again and each each little thing's different it's each time it's not the same thing it's a different thing but you kind of know to get through it in this race i'm sure we'll have different things that are challenges maybe we'll have it's called Shermer's neck maybe i'll have that maybe we'll have to rig something up and that's gonna be miserable but we'll get through it um, sure i just feel like whatever it is we'll get through it that's good that's you gotta <laughs> you've gotta have that attitude <laughs> in something like this you've right. got to like um so that that is cool so so what are what are some of the i mean i can think of like obviously you know some of the biggest what's what's one of the most positive things, um, moments in time that you can remember um, on either of the races? Sunrises are, are magical. I feel okay. sunrises, um, beginning of a new day, it's, it's uh, fresh, new, it's a new start. I don't know, something about riding a bike that time of night and the stars are there and then just ever gradually, ever gradually, uh, you see the, the sky just change color and then eventually the, the sun rises over the horizon. and. To be on your bike for that long, and and you're always you're already so emotional because of the the journey it took you to get there. You know, I have my kids are going to be with me this year for oh, cool. support. They were last year too, and um, you know, it's a year long project. Some people take years just to get to the start line for so much planning, so much uh, training, and uh, it that is just the more work it is, the more awe inspiring it is. So. Um, yeah, those those moments where it's just kind of quiet and no traffic and kind of like every bicycle stream, you know, like the, sure. the deserted road and the perfect wind or the perfect temperature and you're riding along. It's just like it's like you're almost being touched by God right there. It's yeah. like in, in the moment. And so um, and I get 10 to 12 of those on yeah. Race Cross yeah, America. Yeah. You know, can imagine just having one race 100 miles and like, oh, there's a sunrise. But I could do that again and again and again. I almost asked the dumb questions. <laughs> I think I know the answer to this. It's like, oh, do you ever like get a selfie during that moment? You're not carrying a phone. Your, your crew yeah. maybe is gonna. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes I think I had a selfie last year. And Did you? It's I don't like looking. At, like I said, I gained 40 pounds uh, that swing, and yep. um, I don't know who the, that person was. I'm like, oh my god. Sure. You know, no shade. It just your face looks like you've been in a battle, and I can't even like, imagine. My I, lips were scabbed up from all the sunburn and. Um, I can't picture, yeah. I didn't know that was human, humanly possible. Even if you went to the buffet every day, I didn't yeah. even know that that was humanly possible in that short amount of time. Oh yeah, people come to the hospital all the time with um, metabolic issues or okay. organ, organ failures. Um, yeah, unfortunately. Okay, <laughs> okay. So if you were to, um, if there's anybody out there watching this that uh, you know has considered it, um, what would be some of your advice? Um, uh, just, I guess, know thyself. Um, and, you know, I, I do feel like it should throw your hat in the ring when you think you're ready. It's not like you shouldn't try. Um, and I was trying to think of a, a race that's comparable or that you should do first before this race. There is nothing comparable to Ram. And even if you think you did a 200 mile race or a 500 mile race and you do well, um, it doesn't, I'm sorry, it doesn't compare to RAM. I mean, you, you can do well or not well, and you can do great in RAM. So it's, it's really difficult. Um, so I guess having a little confidence, but not overconfident, um, read as much as you can, watch these YouTube videos, uh, see what the hardships are, try and avoid them, but you know, expect the, the, the worst case scenarios and um, get through them. And that's kind of a self-confidence uh, motivator. Uh, and again, know yourself, know what, what nutrition works for you, what doesn't. Every year I'm still, I am on my fifth liquid diet now. It's called Scratch and it's so oh, far works stuff. well. But yeah. I was on Infinite, I was on Endorox, I was on Spiz and, and all these things that other races have tried. Um, I'm, I'm actually gonna gravitate towards more of like solid foods. Uh, the Scratch folks have like these little uh, 
Rice Bars. cakes and, and oh, cakes too, yeah, yeah. stuff you make on your own sure. and you can wrap it up and hand it. So I just want real food. I think liquid diet is okay for a while, but you just crave something and you don't yeah. necessarily want a candy bar or a slice of cake, although they taste good. But <laughs> um, so it's a journey to get to know where your nutrition is and, and to stay the course. I mean, you, you have to expect to be down on the ground with riggers and throwing up and knowing that you can get through it <laughs> or like being a zombie out of the, you know, and be safe. You know, you, you just gotta, it's sometimes you have this headache that is so bad, so bad, but you just got up uh, and you have to ride 300 miles. You're selling this by the way. You're yeah. <laughs> the satisfaction of getting through those makes everything else in life seem like a cakewalk. Sure. So that's a, that's a big sell. You know, sure. yes, I've done it once. Why am I doing it again? You know, and, um, I guess I, they asked me at the end of uh, 2005, what's your plan for Ram? You know, are you hooked? You can do it every year. There's guys who do it like 15 years in a row. So I want to do it once per decade. You know, I missed my forties. I did a lot of ultra running, but, um, I'm in my fifties. So I want to do it in the fifties at DNF last year. And then I'd like to do it in my sixties and seventies. That's awesome. So, yeah. That is awesome. Yeah. The, every time I see the 60, 70 year old cyclist, um, you know, still out there doing it. You know, I always say to my wife, that's me, that's something. me, yeah. that's me, you know, the state of the um, course, man. Yeah, no, yeah. it's, it's, uh, it's super cool. Well, Jim, I really appreciate you spending some time with us. Sure. Um, I'm excited. and, uh, we are definitely going to be fans, um, watching that, watching that radar and watching Good. the map yeah. and, uh, let's do a follow-up video after you're done love celebrating, yes, celebrating of course. and, uh, no, this is so <laughs> cool. I get, you know, I, this is. You know, like I say, there's so much in this. I didn't know much about this until I started researching it. And that's what's cool. There's so yeah. much out there and it, it is in a sweet, sweet event. So, it's, um, yeah, I, I'm sorry. It's such a cult event. I wish you know, they have had title sponsors before. Um, in a way I like small events like this, that, that it's not just like so commercialized. I've, I've been on some ultras that over the years, like the Tahoe 200, it's, mm -hmm. it was a, I did the second year and they're like, 50 people, we were in this little cafeteria thing. And, and the last time I did it, it was this huge room and there's Solomon and all these big time sponsors and flags and just you could feel the air. Sure. It wasn't community wise, sure, it was sure. just like, you know, Too like corporate. I'm a pro, right. I'm a pro ultra athlete. And I'm like, what is that? That's not, right. there's no such thing as a pro ultra. Right. I guess if you get money, but. A pair of shoes. <laughs> yeah, I, just, I feel like, you know, this type of race is still, it's, it's definitely at the top level of ultra events but i still feel like you were all in there to help each other like grassroots if, yeah if somebody was on the side of the road you would help them they would help me and we're all suffering together and it's and it's like it, it, that community feel is still with race across america but i on the other hand i would like to see it like if you've not heard of it and you, you're a cyclist all right 10 right? 12 I mean, years and i've heard <laughs> of it like here and there but they're you know like like they i think it is it's under promoted. So yeah. here we are trying to yeah. promote even more so that people, it, it is a sweet thing. Like even if there was a way, you know, I'm a technology guy, I'm mm -hmm. a video buff and all that, like, like, uh, somehow somebody from Ram to have like a, you know, the GoPro at those stations, yeah. you know, to like let, a live feed or something. Yeah. Like yeah. you know what's going on. Maybe and, it's just such a long race. Yeah, it's like, a, uh, it's, it's like commitment. staring at a wall or a bush for like, you know, three hours until, oh, there goes a rider. There he goes. Right, 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 right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly, <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, like, you know, a couple of times uh, when we were watching the did a rod thing, you know, I'd go to bed, I'd wake up. Oh, they're still on their bikes. Yeah. You know? I mean, that type of mindset, yeah. you know, and, and uh, so that's the same thing. But, well, thanks so You're much. You're welcome. Appreciate and, uh, the time. Yeah, like say he biked over. I was like, <laughs> I was standing in the driveway. I'm like, I heard like, oh my gosh, duh, he's getting training in. <laughs> so yeah. um, let's catch up afterwards, you know, and we'll For look sure. forward to um, hearing some stories okay. and, and all that fun stuff. So and maybe I'll get Josh here. He's one of the crew and he'll give a crew perspective. Yes. I'd and love I'll... to hear that. I'd love to hear that. <laughs> that was... some nights where that light was like Cyclops and I was being drawn in. <laughs> and I was about to fall asleep and run Jim over. <laughs> <laughs> hey, lastly, not to start a whole nother topic, but... You know, how many, you know, wavy times were you all wavy on the road? Did you have any near Sometimes, tip overs? Sometimes, um, I, I know my body well enough to where I'm getting to that state, not to push it. It's okay. time to take, and I'm getting better at cat naps. Like if I crawl in the front seat of the car, 
Yep. I'll, I'll start snoring in 30 seconds and I'll tell my crew 15 minutes and they might do 15 minutes. Say, Jim, it's 15. Give me five more. And then um, I, I can get up and I'm kind of refreshed. I, yeah. I was always envious of other racers who could do that. And I'm like, ah, I'm not a napper. Mm -hmm. I, I need sleep. Naps make me more tired. Mm -hmm. um, but once you kind of get into that state and plus you're off the bike, it's so frustrating. You want to get to this point. You want to sure. keep going. You just got passed by another racer or whatever. Or crews, like sometimes the crew um, has been in the car for 10 to 12 hours. You want a fresh, you want to be considerate of them. Sure. So if I get to this point, they can flip out and have a fresh crew. And here I am just like, sleep, sleep, sleep. <laughs> I want a break. I'm in pain. You know, and the crew's like, oh, they don't ever do that, but you can just yeah, tell. Like, they tell. want yeah, to sleep. Yeah. They want to be done, to take a shower. And here I am just like milking it out. And I, I do, that's another motivation for me. Yep. Um, but not, not too many, I mean, knock on wood, you know, you never know, you hit a pothole, you're just not paying attention. Mm -hmm. um, but the more scary the environment, the more you pay attention. And I just thought about 10 yeah. more questions, yeah. but we'll wrap this up because I'm thinking <laughs> okay. of flats and all these other yeah, things. Yeah. But, but no, this is great. Right. Um, we will definitely, um, we'll put, we'll get, do you have like Instagram handles or anything like that? Uh, I do. It's, okay. Um, I guess I could. Yeah, we'll put it on the. We'll, yep, we'll yeah. put it on the bottom here um, of the description. Um, so go ahead and go over there and follow him. Uh, watch the journey. I'm sure his family will be keeping some, you know, mm -hmm. keeping some of that live. And yeah. and uh, so how fun that Thanks. is amazing. Yeah. So uh, congrats on yeah. the taking on the thing. And <laughs> I'm already giving you congrats on finishing. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> so thanks very much. All right. You're welcome. Yeah. All right.